you have my gospel track, 98% of you, has God's law, the Ten Commandments, how we've broken them, all of them, including me. I've broken all of them, unfortunately. And that the punishment for even one little sin, all it takes is one little lie, my friends, which I've done, to, is to, to condemn me into hell and be punished and be thrown in hell where I would be under the wrath of God. But what is a story about Christmas? So many people are, are, are celebrating a Christmas. They're buying presents and getting ready, the hustle and bustle of Christmas. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says about Christmas. There's many passages that tell you who Jesus was and what happened to baby Jesus. But I'm going to just share this one passage in the Scriptures that tells you what happens to Jesus 33 years after he was born. But first of all, I want to tell you who Jesus is. Jesus is the Christ. The, the, the Messiah. He is the Lamb of God who is slain for the foundations of this world. For those that would be saved throughout the foundations of this world. And right here in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, it says, remember this is baby Jesus, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. That Jesus Christ, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, baby Jesus, the Christmas story, that he would be put to death 33 years later on that cross for the sins of his church. That Christ died for sinners like me, that Christ died for the ungodly, that Christ would redeem those that God had drawn to Christ. That God the Father would choose His elect, draw them to Christ for the redemptive work of the cross. That Christ, the God Almighty, would pour out His wrath and punish Jesus on that cross on behalf of the sins of the church. Who is the church? It's those that are born again. It's those that are written, whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And it says that Christ went to that cross. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. He didn't just die. He was buried, and then on the third day, He bodily rose from the grave. King Jesus is alive. He's risen. He's alive, my friends. That's what Easter is celebrating. But he didn't stop right there either. Through his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ then ascended into heaven, where he now sits at the right hand of the Father. He's equal with the Father. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Where Christ God Almighty, if you become saved, will intercede on your behalf. That's glorious good news. My friends, it's not about Santa Claus. Santa's dead, but Jesus is alive. Santa Claus is just an idol. But Jesus Christ, the glorious King of kings and Lord of lords, has risen from the grave. How you doing, sir? You raising your hands? How you doing, man? You, you, are, are you raising them to the Lord? Well, I'm glad. The Bible says, "Lift your hands, lift holy hands to a holy God." Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I have to make a conference call on iPad video. Oh. So I cannot hear the sound. Okay. So can you? We will save your place in line. Okay. You will save. Uh huh. Okay. I will save your place in line. Okay. You got okay. Half an hour, huh? Oh, half an hour? Yeah. Um, I'm standing there. Okay, I can only be here. Okay, I'm going to make sure that he gets your place in line, okay? Right, okay. okay, sir. All okay, right. I'll be back when hey, I... would you make sure you save this gentleman's place in line? He's got to make a conference call. Is that okay? Would you make sure that happens, ma'am? Because when they open, I have to leave. It's uh, I can't stay here and preach when they're open for business. All right? But we'll make sure, sir, that your place is, is, is safe for you. Okay? Will you guys make that happen between you two? Yeah. All right. You know, those, 
those two, the one in the front, the one in the back, are going to make sure that when he gets done with his phone call, that his place in line will still be there. That's what Christ did on the cross for his church. He stood in the gap. It's called the substitutionary atonement. The Bible says, He who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, died for us. But who's the us? Again, the us is the church. It's those that re repent and that put their trust in Christ for salvation. One of the beautiful verses in the scriptures that I love, again, the scripture has much exclusivity. It, it's, it's, it's for Christians only, my friends. This is not for those that are not saved. It's not for those that aren't saved. And it says that God demonstrated his love towards us so much and that yet we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Again, who's the us? It's those that get saved, my friends. It's not for everybody. The question is, are you going to be part of the us? Are you going to be become born again? Washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Renewed by the Holy Spirit. Regenerated. A brand new heart with new desires. Oh, the, this is not a prosperity gospel. God's not going to give you a new car, a new younger wife, or a new younger husband, or a new checking account, or a new this, or better health. No, but he'll give you eternal life. Eternal life, my friends, where you can live in heaven with the glory of glories and, and, and be with the Lord, the one that created you, rather than be in hell, where you would be under the wrath of God. So, my dear friends, would you respond to that gospel call in faith and repentance and put your faith and trust in Christ? The Bible says that if you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. I'm going to be here for a little while. I do have, my, I do have a video camera. I upload these on YouTube. If you ask me to omit any personal, private conversations, I will. But I will be here for any prayer requests that you may have or if you have any questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, okay. it says in the Bible that, that we will be brought up with him and he will come and bring his church with him. Um, it's called the second coming of Christ. Okay, now, with that, we even hate sometimes. Uh -huh. um, but, but the good news is for the Christian that's saved, the, the, the heart would be regenerated by the Holy Spirit. He enables us to repent. So we're not going to stay in that sin too long. We're going to repent because we're going to be convicted. So. Um, well, I don't. Th if a person's truly saved, if they are born again and they're having a hard time forgiving, I, I don't. I do not believe that they will lose their salvation. I do not believe that. I believe in the perseverance of the saints that Christ will preserve them all the way to the end. Okay. Um, the truth is, because because Jesus said nobody can pluck you out of my. If you're saved, Jesus said nobody can pluck you out of my hand. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I do believe that a Christian ought to live their lives as if they could lose their salvation. Yeah. Amen. Um, truth is, if, if I could have lost my salvation like a set of car keys, mm -hmm. I lost my cell phone the other day. Okay. If I can lose my salvation like I can lose my cell phone, I would have, been, I would have been, I already, I already lost my salvation a hundred <laughs> times already. So what I have to do is, re is, 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 when I repent, is, is thrust myself upon Christ and trust and trust in the finished work of what He accomplished on that cross. Yeah. Amen. Okay. And you're right. Hatred in our heart is actually murder. If you did you read that track, oh. I, my track I gave you. I'm gonna read it. Yeah, hatred I'm in our heart. In